even have a clue of, oh God. That is you and you alone that is always at work. Hallelujah. Man, Father God, I just we praying right now, Lord God. Let your spirit that's in this place, Father God, capture us in a way like never before, giving us understanding and reality uh, and revelations of, of, of things that, Lord, that, that our minds may have not even talked to, uh, thought of. But, Father God, I'm asking for supernatural revelations in our heart right now. That is, the Spirit is here in it, in, of, of you, O oh God, that is, is sent to, to accomplish what you will, O oh God, that it rests on every heart. Right now, Lord God, that it don't leave us alone, Lord God, that it does, that it begins to work in us, Father God. Yo, that which is your truth, Father God. Right now, Lord God, in this place, Lord God, that, that it works in us a change, Father God, that it, that it gives us a change of heart today. That it rearranges us in such a way, Father God, that when we leave this place, that we could never that we could never be the same, oh God. That it does something and it takes us in a, to a place in you, Lord God, that would not allow us to remain the same, oh God. But that it draws us closer to you, oh God. That it draws us closer to you, Father God, that we may walk closer with you. That we may submit ourselves and commit ourselves to, to and for the rest of our days, oh God, for your will to be done in our lives. Just as we sung the song that I give myself away, Lord God, that it not just remain a song on our lips, but it becomes a living a mechanism in our heart, oh God. That will cause us to yield unto you, O oh God, this day and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to be afraid. And we certainly don't have to be ashamed to praise God. Uh, I just want to serve notice to each and every one of you as, as God has served notice to me. This today is not going to be a typical protocol worship experience. Somebody got me on that. I'm going to say it again that today the spirit of the Lord wants to have his way that will call that this cannot be a typical protocol. See, protocol comes from man. It was what we orchestrate. Service unto God. That means that God wants to move in this place. He wants to, uh, and, and when I say in this place, I'm not talking about in this place. I'm talking about in this place. And that's for each and every one of us. He wants to move in the place. That this cannot be a typical protocol worship experience. Or even at this point, sermon for that matter. So if God is in control and if God is, if we are willing to give God his free reign in this place right now, in, in that, and you only can do that for yourself to, be, to, to participate in what God is wanting to do in this place for each and every one of us, hallelujah then it's going to take us yielding to the Holy Spirit. Can I get, uh, can we come in agreement just even to do that on, on today? Would that be all right? More than us just operating. We know what the protocol is. The protocol is I get up here and, and you know, I go through uh, the sermon that I prepared and, 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 and we say amen and hallelujah to that which the, some parts that we agree with and then we ignore the other parts that we don't and then we, you know, it, it's all good. No, it's not all good. God wants your participation on today. He wants your participation in there more than anything. So if you will, let's start our participation by turning your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. 
Philippians chapter 2. Glory be to God. And as you turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, I want to ask the question to each and every one of you that's here in this place and that may see on YouTube or Facebook or, or wherever. The question is, is who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? We know that Jesus, uh, you know, that there could be many you know, somebody's confused already because there could be many answers or, or, or responses to, as to who Jesus is. But the bottom line, of, above all things, first and foremost, as Jesus can be many things and he does have done many things, but the bottom line is, is uh, when we go to the bottom line, who is Jesus? Well, I'll just answer, I'll dare to answer that for you here today. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. See, uh, uh, this ain't going to be no typical uh, uh, sermon that you just sit there and listen to me. So can I, who is Jesus? Come on, somebody. Who is Jesus today? He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Can I get, can, can, can you join me with saying he is Lord. Let's make it personal. He is my Lord. He is Lord. And if, and if it's nothing else said today, then we've said and heard enough. If that has spoken to your heart, I'm talking about if you received that in your heart because Jesus is Lord. And that means everything. That is everything. That's the beginning of it and that's the end of it, my friend. We can close the book and, and let's go home. We, can, we ought to jump and shout up out of this place. Because you, uh, one thing that you know today, that he is Lord. And that right there can take you through the rest of your days, my friend. And it can take you through every circumstances. Every situation, any and all that you may encounter from one day to the next, that he is Lord. And more specifically, that he is my Lord. But I guess it starts by us understanding what Lord is. We would then have to ask ourselves the question, what is Lord? In Philippians chapter 2, Verses 8 to 11, it reads like this. This is Paul writing to the church at Philippi. But many of us understand that in him writing this letter to the church at Philippi, he wrote it with the understanding and the notion that it would not just stay in Philippi. <laughs> But just like uh, the letter that he wrote to the Ephesian church that he knew that it would ultimately begin to circle or uh, circulate to other to local churches and not only to other local churches, but even to today, my friends. That this letter that he wrote, uh, you know, inspired by God, that it not only would speak to the modern day a Philippian congregation, but then it would reach other regions of churches back that uh, that was back then, and many obviously that he had established. But even today, the church of today, and guess who's the church of today? The modern day church is me and you, my friend. The modern day church of today. So he writes by the inspiration of God, in verses eight through eleven, reads like this: and being found. In the appearance as a man, he's talking about Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Hear what thus saith the Lord. We're talking about Jesus, my friend. That he's been given a name above every name because it was God himself that has exalted him 
high above everything for his obedience to the call and the, uh, that God has set, the charge that God has set before him. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say that he has been given a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on the earth and those underneath the earth those under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Not to your glory, not to my glory, but to the satisfaction of God the Father. So when we're talking about who is Jesus and him being Lord, he is appointed Lord, not because you believe that he's Lord, but because God has made him Lord of all things. And glory be to God that you have come into the privilege of, uh, of the knowledge of understanding that he is Lord. I'm talking about especially today or in today's time. See, somebody don't understand the value in you knowing and recognizing or, or, or believing that Jesus is Lord. See, the value don't come because you believe that he's Lord. The value comes because God has exalted him, that God the Father, the creator of all things, have exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, my friend. Today, that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. See, Lord, then, as we focus on it, is, is one that we... Uh, that first of all, that is exalted in a place that we didn't, uh, and that we didn't exalt him to. First and foremost. So Lord is one that has a position that you didn't uh, give. You didn't vote on it. So Lord ain't like president, my friends, see, because we vote on the president of the United States. Here. See, this Lord we're talking about here was not appointed by man, but by God. This Lord, or this one was appointed by God to be the head over all things. When Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he, he made reference to that he was the head uh, of the church. As well as to the Colossians, he spoke to, uh, when he wrote the letter to the Colossians, he spoke of the same things, my friend, that he had been giving uh, the, uh, the, to be head of all things. And the beautiful thing is when we study the Bible, we know that not only was he given to be head of all things, uh, the church, but that, every, but that everything that was created was created through him. Glory be to God. Is what first John 1 verse 1 says. That God in, through, in and through his creation, he created everything through Jesus Christ, which is our Lord. So in us understanding that he, the Lord is not a position that we have exalted him to, but is one that God has placed him in. Hallelujah. In there. And Lord is not, uh, secondly, then Lord is one that we follow. Hallelujah. That we follow what? The command of the Lord. It's, it's one that is more than a master and, and it speaks, the, 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 the essence of it speaks more than what we would know in the natural from a master and a slave uh, uh, standpoint. See, because even from a natural standpoint, if a, a slave had a master, he still had a cho or chance or a choice to defy. But when you're talking about the Lord that God has 
placed in place for those of us that have come, have been saved by his blood. Glory be to God. His commands, we don't have a choice. I'm talking, do you have a choice? Can you make a wrong choice? Absolutely. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those of us that understand the, who he is, that he is Lord. And as Lord, then he is the one that we follow. And when you have a Lord and you've committed yourself to the Lord, then you don't have no choice but to follow him. That's, that's, that's the commitment that you're making when you receive him as Lord. See, but for somehow or for some reason, we've always left, you know, somewhere maybe in the back of our mind or in the corner of our heart, this place where that were as though we had a choice. No, when you make the commitment, you give yourself no choice. It ain't that you didn't have a choice, but now that you've made the commitment, then you are obligated to your commitment. Therefore, it leaves you with no choice. And this is something that we have to uh, remind ourselves in because then we, that way we won't be teetering, tottering back and forth as though we have a choice. We just will remember, Brother G, that, uh, that, uh, Q, that we've already made a choice. So our focus then would be not on whether that we got a choice. It would be, our focus would be to remind ourselves that I made a choice. And then the choice I've made, then it is my, then, then that's where I live from, the choice that I made. Come on, somebody. Are you with me on this morning? He is Lord. Say that to yourself. He is Lord. Say that to yourself that he is my Lord. Remind yourself today. See, because God wants to speak to us on today just very quickly. He wants to minister to your heart right where you are for each and every one of us. And that means every one of us. You are not here by happenstance. There are situations that are going on in our lives and they don't always have to be bad situations. Some situations could be a great one. There could be choices that we have or, 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 you know, or, or, or things that set before us, that, whether the good or bad. There could be, and if, they, if you're not so aware of it today, then trust me, it's going to be there tomorrow. That there is things that are set before you. And God is wanting to speak to your heart today to remind you. That, and that you remind and continue to remind yourself that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he is Lord. And if he is Lord in you and he is your Lord, then all situations, every circumstances, whether good or bad, he has control of. That he is working it. No, he's working it. He is working it. And in him working it, don't get it confused how uh, God's been said over and over again. Don't get it twisted. Because we use Romans chapter 8 verse 28 that he's working all things for my good. No, it don't say for you, my good. It says for the good. And the good is God's good. First and foremost. And because we are of God, then that includes us. When you think of it the other way, then it's my good, it's, it's, it's yours exclusively, and then you have the choice if you want to include God at times. Outside of you work, work this, work it for my, work it the way I want it to be worked. Moa, we have a problem sometimes because we can easily be led to, you know, and, and it's an easy appeal because uh, when we are easily led to wrong understanding, it's an appeal to our flesh. The flesh part of us. But the spirit of God speaks, wants to speak to the, your, your spirit. The spirit of God that he's placed in you, my friends. See, this is what Jesus was talking about, that I must go away, that the spirit of truth, so the spirit of truth can come. The one that my father is going to send, that he's going to be in you and that he's going to dwell in you and he's going to lead and guide you into all truths. Glory be to God. God is calling us, it's high time, my friend, that he's calling us to this place as believers for, you know, not that that just be a saying, but it be a reality 
in your life in your life today and that's not a bad thing it's a great thing because when we are talking about what the word of God says that is so powerful that ultimately this is what we must understand and, 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 and have the right understanding see because I'll say it like this because when you look at what Paul wrote here he was looking beyond the days of Christ's exhortation into heaven he, he began to look to the future when every tongue in heaven and on earth will exalt Jesus or understand and realize Jesus is Lord though not everyone on earth received the king on his first arrival see every one of us didn't have not received and will not receive him as king and Lord on the, his first arrival, but guess what? On the day in which Paul speaks of, yo, know, every person on earth, in heaven, and under the earth at that point is going to see him for who he is. Who is he? Lord. He is Lord. Who is he? Lord. Come on, somebody. Is he really your Lord? Who is he? He's Lord. If you know that in your heart, then why, don't, you, don't be ashamed. Express it. Because that's the part where God is trying to make the connection by the Spirit today, my friends. That we don't arbitrarily going around speaking, oh, yeah, Jesus is Lord. No, he's Lord. Because you got to know this. And he's my Lord. See, this is why I know. And yes, I can be very passionate about it because he is my Lord. So there ain't no situation that I come up against that I know that he's not able to bring me through. See, this is where we fall down and get tripped up and sidetracked by the enemy because we don't know he's Lord. We know of him being Lord, but do you know he's your Lord? He's your Lord. And that makes all the difference in the world, my friend. And I don't care what kind of personality you got. We're talking about, it ain't about you, it's about the Lord. And him being Lord. And when you know that, my friends, don't matter. He, see, this spirit, that when it, when it comes inside of you, just like some of them foul spirits when it comes inside, they don't care what kind of personality a person got. We have seen some of them spirits at work. And they will work you, twist you, torment you, and do all of that stuff. But this spirit, glory be to God, when he comes, we're talking about the spirit of the almighty God. When he is at work in you, hallelujah, then you, it's, it's like uh, one of the Old Testament prophets said, it's like fire that's shut up in my bones. I just can't contain it. See, uh, Mr. Hawkins sung the song, uh, that, that, yo, in there, some, some of y'all know. It's like fire that's shut up in your bones, my friends. Glory be to God. And so this is huge for us today. Because in knowing that he is Lord, look at Acts chapter 4 real quick. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Let me go there with me just really fast. See, because this is him being Lord is what God has orchestrated from the beginning of time. And this is why it's important for us to understand that we didn't just, we didn't make him Lord. Or you believing that he's Lord is not what makes him Lord. What makes him Lord is we already read it that God has exalted him because of his obedience. Uh, uh, God has exalted him. To this high place, hallelujah, <clears throat> as being Lord. Because God, before the foundation of the earth, has chosen him to be the cornerstone by which he would work all things according to his will. In, 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 in Acts chapter 4, verse 11, it says this, this is the stone which you, re you, which was rejected, glory be to God, by you builders. And this stone has become the chief cornerstone. 
See, because Paul, I mean, uh, here Peter was uh, uh, addressing the Sanhedrin. That's the, all of them, the big boys uh, uh, at the courthouse. Glory be to God. As they was trying to put them on trial. And, and, and some of the other disciples, and as he addressed the Sanhedrin, he said, now th this one that you crucified, he is the, uh, the stone which was rejected by, uh, by your builders. Glory be to God, which has become the chief cornerstone. Verse 12, nor is there in their salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given men by which we must be saved. See, he is Lord because God has orchestrated him as Savior. See, now we can join the two together. So in order for Jesus to be your Savior, you, he has to be your Lord. There's a choice that you have to have made in your heart that in him, uh, in that, in, in the salvation, God's plan of salvation, glory be to God, that saves your soul. It don't just save your soul. It also makes Jesus the Lord of your life. 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 See, it's, it's, you know, there's a, 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 when we're talking about him being Lord, when we talk about him being the master, yo, this is not something that we can take lightly, my friends, because salvation took the a, a fulfillment of God's righteous demand for us to even have the opportunity for salvation and obviously we all understand that that was not something by which either one or neither one of us could do that it took Jesus coming in the form of man that's what our text scripture is talking about in Philippians chapter 2 that he didn't think so highly of himself but he humbled himself and he came in the form being God came in the form of a man and he walked through this time Sinless, unlike us, and committed himself to fulfill the righteous demand of God by dying, giving his life to death on that cross. And it was God that raised him from the dead, that now that he has been raised from the dead, that he has been given a name that's above every name, that there is no other name by which one can be saved, glory be to God. And so where the rubber begins to meet the road for us today is this. In Romans chapter 14 is where the rubber begins to meet the road for us. Romans chapter 14, it speaks of the law of liberty, the freedom that we have in Christ. But that freedom did not come free it came free to us, but it didn't come free at all. In verse 9, it says, For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. That's uh, Romans 14, verse 9. I'm going to read it again. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Skip down to verse 11. So, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. That every tongue shall confess to God that he is Lord. What they going to confess? That he is Lord. And we've already made reference to this. This is not just to, uh, to believers, my friend. This is that every, this was, uh, when you see what was written in verse 11, this was what was writ, uh, prophesied or written even in the Old Testament that the prophet spoke to. So Paul is just making a reference to what was all actually already spoken. Where was it? In, in Isaiah 45. In Isaiah 45, verse 23, the prophet Isaiah, God had already placed that 
as a prophecy to the nation of Israel that, uh, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. What they confessing to God? What God has already established and said to us that he, I have exalted him to a place that is above everything and every name, my son Jesus. And so the confession that every man that ever lived on this earth is going to make is to God that Jesus is Lord. My friends, he is Lord. He is Lord. And not only is he Lord, he's your Lord. And so the thing about this is that this has to be more for us. This has to be more for us and to us than just words that we say. It has to be more than words or just words that we say. Because when you are talking about him being Lord, then there's three words here that I wrote on this board that has different flavors that we want to talk about. Because they all speak of a, uh, they all make a, uh, a speak of a thing. They all make a, 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 they all speak of a thing. So proclamation for an example. And the flavor that proclamation, see proclamation, declaration, and confession, guess what? They all have something in common and that is that they speak a thing. But there's something about confession because the word of God says that everyone will confess to God. That he is Lord. See, not everyone will proclaim to him. See, pro uh, proclaim, even though it speaks a thing, its flavor, it speaks of a belief. Of something that has been revealed to him. So think about it. Proclaim, when you proclaim a thing, then you speaking from what you believe. And that's fine and dandy. Even to the point where when you declare a thing, that speaks of something that you're hoping for or hoping in. But understand this. When one confess a thing, it speaks of something, a renewed understanding. To confess something is that I didn't have that understanding before, but when I, a confession brings forth and it speaks of something that I truly understand now. Now. And see, here's the, the sad part for many, but the good news for some is that this confession, my friend, is one that we may today is one that we've made right here and right now to the glory of God. And see, those of us that have believed today, right here, right now, glory be to God, we can make that confession of what? He is who? He is Lord. It's a beautiful confession for us to understand right here and right now that he is Lord. And not and see this confession ain't just with the mouth, you know. It's, it, it, it 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 speaks just of what it speaks to when it, even for us to have sal uh, salvation. That when, and especially those in the biblical days at the time that this was written, they would have truly understood this because a man spoke a confession or spoke a thing. There's no, when he spoke a thing, his word was bond, not much like us today where we got to have a million contracts signed and even them, they don't hold up because we'll take them to court and contest them and all of these different things. But when a man confessed the thing or spoke that thing from a renewed understanding that they come into an agreement, then it was no if, ands, buts about it. He knew first and foremost that he's binding himself by this confession. 
And see, in the good news, my friend, then in that, he wasn't going to try to cheat the confession. He wasn't going to try to beat the confession. He wasn't going to try to get around that which he's confessed it. No, he was going to submit to. Submit to what he's confessed. And so clearly, you know, as the book of Romans 10, 9 as it even pertains to salvation, it says that one must confess with their mouth and believe in their heart. In there. See, so the confession came from where? From that which he believed. That is what leads one unto salvation and righteousness. Because for what the mouth one believes unto righteousness and what the uh, I mean, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made. Unto salvation. The confession is a proclamation of what the revelation is. One, with the proclamation, what one believe that has been revealed to him. But then when he confesses it, he's speaking from a place of a new understanding. <laughs> of a new understanding, my friends. And so, because we know that Jesus is Lord today, then guess what? We don't have to find out or get a renewed understanding about who he is on the day of judgment. Because there's going to be some that don't make this confession until the day of judgment. See the difference? And that's going to be at a time and a place where it's too late. It's too late to make the confession then. Because why is it too late? It's only too late for one thing and one thing only. Because you're going to make the confession. What do we just read? That every Living thing. Let's go back to it. I'll leave that there for your looking. That it says right here very clearly that every tongue shall confess to God. So it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when is that tongue going to make this confession, my friends. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Believers with joy, we're going to confess with joy unbelievers with sorrow and remorse. That's the difference. Why? Because it changes. The only difference is, is our eternal destination, my friend. And that's a huge difference. Don't misunderstand when I say the only difference. That is the hugest difference. If that's a word, the biggest difference. A big difference. It means everything. And this is why it's urgent for you and me and for each and every one of us to hear what thus saith the Lord today. Because every time a person leaves this earth and they have not confessed that Jesus is Lord, their confession is going to come at a time where their destination or destiny cannot be changed. And for every man that ever walked on earth need a new destination since the fall of man. Somebody missed that. Since the fall of man, since sin entered into the world, our destination was, uh, had changed and it was changed to one place and one place only and that was the separation from God. But God through his love, his, his love, oh excuse me, his great love for us did what we could not do for ourselves and he made a way out of no way that removed or given us the opportunity to remove every transgression that all of our sins are gone for those that confess Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. So while, can you see why this is so important? It's not so important to us. First and foremost, it's most important to God. 
And therefore, that which is important to God, the creator of all things, that makes him the ruler of all things, anything and everything that's important to him, we must and have to come subject to. That has to be our heart. Is it your heart today to surrender and submit yourself to the will of God? To everything that God wants for your life? Yes, there comes a dilemma because yes, that includes everything that God wants a lot for your life above everything that you want for your life. Yeah. But hopefully the picture becomes clear, my friends. Because every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. For believers, it's going to be to the joy of that confession. To non-believers, it's going to be to sorrow and remorse. So glory be to God that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. And that we know it. See, the value is, Mr. Debbie, uh, I mean, Miss Debbie, is that we know it. So what are you talking about, Pastor John? I'm talking about standing on your feet because some of y'all falling asleep right now. Jesus is Lord. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Every one of you. <laughs> Don't hesitate. It don't matter if you hesitate or not. Jesus is our, he was Lord when you was hesitating. He's Lord. But the good news today, not only is he Lord, he's my Lord. Somebody say he's Lord. But not only that, he's my Lord. But not only that, he's my Lord and I know it. Glory be to God. Let's give God some praise in this place. Because he is Lord. He's my Lord. And I know it today. Glory be to God. Therefore, I can confess it today and I don't have to worry about that day. We can do it with joy. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we magnify and we glorify your precious name. Thanking you Oh God, that you made a way out of no way and that you have exalted your son, hallelujah, as your word says, that high and lifted up and that you also exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, oh Lord. That at the name of Jesus, of those that are on the earth, in heaven and under the earth that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen.